Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today we see the next counter. That is the four-bit asynchronous up counter. All right. So now, as the name suggests, four-bit. So we require four flip-flops. All right. Uh, and and I've already drawn the four flip-flops over here, but I forgot to give this input over here as well. The logic one. Logic one is given to all the inputs. And it will be toggling. Now, with the help of four bits, we can represent numbers from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, which means from 0 to 16. All right? And that is how we, 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 we now we see it and we, we implement it. All right? So now the external clock pulse is given to TA. All right? So TA will operate on the negative edges on the external clock pulse. All right? So let me mention the negative edges. All right? So these are the negative edges. Okay. So uh, now what do you do? The first output is let's say QA, all right? This is QA. Initially supposed to be zero. Fine, this is zero. Now, what do you do? It toggles at the first falling gauge, okay? This is toggle. Now till the next falling gauge, it will stay high and then then it toggles again at the falling gauge. It will stay low till the falling gauge, on the falling gauge toggle. And that is what happens, you know what happens next. So like it toggles, which means it goes from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0 whenever a falling edge arrives. All right, so you can complete this diagram by yourself. Okay, or I'm doing it for you guys. Fine, this is for QA now, okay? All right. Now the next is what? The next is QB. All right. And QB, the uh, the input, the clock is given from QA. All right. So which means now this QB will operate on the negative edges of what? Of QA. So let me mention them over here. These are the negative edges of QA. And I forgot to mention what? Can you guess what? I forgot to mention that in this case we have the QD is the most significant bit. Fine, and the QA is, <coughs> as the previous video, it is the least significant bit. Fine, now, now we draw it for QB. So considering an initial zero state, on the negative edge it will toggle, all right? Now it will stay high till the next falling edge. On this falling edge it will toggle, it will go back to zero. And this is how it repeats. On the negative edge goes high, on the negative edge goes low, on the negative edge goes high, on the negative edge goes low, and this. Fine. Now this is for QB. Now this QB is given as a clock pulse to QC, which means QC will operate on the negative edges of QB. All right. So this is QC, and these are the falling edges of Q, B, all right, so initially let's say it was zero, so it will stay zero to the negative edge, it will go high, then it will stay high till the next negative edge, go low, then stay low till the next falling edge, then go high, then go stay high till the next falling edge, and then go low finally. And finally for Q, D, Q, D is in the blue color, so Q, D now depends on the value of QC, all right, so on this, on these negative edges, so only two, that's good. So considering an initial zero state, it will stay zero till the first falling edge, then it will go high, will stay high till the next falling edge, and it will go low when the next falling edge has arrived. So if we had another output QE, the five bit counter, which I will not be doing, because I don't have more space. Well, you also don't need to do it because the basic concept is the same. If you have the next fifth bit, it will be operating on this particular edge now. So that's about it. Now we draw what? Now we draw the truth table for it. So for which I'm going to remove this and I'm going to draw a horizontal table. All right, it will be a little different, but I have no space, so you will have to compromise on it, okay? So what do we have here? We have the clock pulses. 
we have q q d is the most significant bit then we have q c q b q a fine now let me count the number of uh, clock pulses all right negative is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 all right okay so let me write it over here now let's say first i write the initial value initially all right then we say the first falling edge second falling edge third four fifth sixth seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteenth and so on that is not our concern all right now initially before the first negative edge QD, QB, QC, all of them were zeros, all right? So I write over here as zeros for all of them. Now when the first, uh, when the first edge arrives, all right? So, so what happens now? QA goes high, fine. QB is low, QC is low, QD is low. All right, all of them are low, all right? Now when the second edge arrives, QA goes low, QB goes high, QC and QD both are still low. Now for the third edge, QA has gone high, QB is still high, and QC and QD are still low. For the fourth edge, QA goes low, QB goes low, QC goes high, QD is still low. For the fifth, QA goes high, QB is low, QC is still high, QD is still low. Okay, now for the sixth, QA goes low, QB goes high, QC is still high, QD is still low. For the seventh, you have QA goes high, QB is still high, QC is still high, QD is still low. All right, so now for the eighth, QA goes low, QB goes low, QD, QC goes low, and QD finally goes high. Now, for the ninth, QA goes high, QB goes, uh, is low, QC is low, and QD is high. For the tenth, you have a QA goes low, QB goes high, QC is still low, and QD is still high. For the 11th, QA goes high, QB is still high, QC is still low, and QD is still high. For the 12th, QA goes low, QB goes low, QC goes high, and QD is still high. For the 13th, QA goes high, QB is still low, QC is high, and QD is still high. For the 14th, QA goes low, QB goes high, QC is still high, and QD is still high. For the 15th, QA goes high, QB is still high, QC is still high, QD is still high. For the 16th pulse, we have each and every one of them go back to the low state, which means what? Our concern was still the... 15th clock pulse we are not interested after what happens the 16th clock after what happened the 15th all right and the 16th we we, we 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 come to know that our operation is done so this is the decimal equivalence all right the clock pulse also representing the decimal equivalence which means we have started our journey from zero and we have reached 15 at this state this state is not our concern all right so at the 16th we are done so we don't need either the 16th also but we don't need the 17th okay so that's about it that is all about it all right you had uh, states how many to the power uh, to the power n so in this case we had n is equal to 4 all right if n is equal to 4 so you have 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16 states which are ranging from 0 
to 15, all right, 0 to 15. And the maximum count was what? 2 to the power 4 minus 1. And the maximum count is also 15. All right. So the maximum number that we can represent with 4 bits is 15. That is what I said wrong while starting this video, all right. I, I remember it now. The maximum number that we can represent with 4 bits is 1111, which is equal to 15, not 16. Okay, this is what I said wrong. 8 and 4, 12, 12 and 2, 14, and then 1, so this is 15. So that's all about it. That's all about today, about the 4 bit asynchronous up counter. The 5 bit would be a little complex to draw over here. I don't have space. Have a look how the clock pulse I've drawn so small. In that case, you will, need, you will be needing 32 negative edges. And that is a little difficult to draw over here and also for you to draw on the board, uh, on the copy, okay? So I believe you finish it over here in the four bits, that's enough. So that's all. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do subscribe. Goodbye.